Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Farm Journal Brandt webinar. I'm your host, Dave Russell, owner of Dave Russell Media. Today's webinar, learn about nutritional balance to high yield corn and increased ROI, brought to you by Brandt and Farm Journal. Thanks for joining us. Just a reminder, at uh, any time uh, during the webinar, you can ask a question by going to the question mark icon at the right of the screen. Now, if you don't see that question mark icon, you are probably viewing in full screen mode. Just hit the escape key and you should be good to go. Today on the webinar, we're going to discuss all the growth stages of a corn crop and the key nutrients needed at each growing stage. The goal, to provide you a complete nutrition program for corn to maximize quality, yield, and ROI. Joining me on the webinar, Ed Corrigan, Senior Agronomist of Discovery and Innovation at Brandt, where he has been for 15 years. Ed oversees Brandt's research and development farm. He also helps with agronomic support and product training for multiple Brandt companies. Ed, good to see you. Welcome to the webinar. Thanks, Dave. You know, at uh, Brandt, our Discovery and Innovation Group is really focused on trying to create products that solve a lot of farmers' issues in the field that limit the growth and yield of the crop. So our, our focus is to really give us, give the grower a product that influences them positively with a return on investment. So let's dive into the corn program and see where we're at today. Corn fertility program, the four main goals are really um, trying to look at influencing times of the growth stages of the plant that can really change the overall yield that we're looking for. First is priming the soil. Priming the soil happens even before we plant, and it's really about making sure that that nutritious area that we're gonna plant that seed into is gonna give us the opportunity for a good germination and early growth, even in maybe cold, damp conditions. Second, early stages, V2, V3, V4, early ear development. This is a, a lot of early focus and we wanna make sure that we're there with something that uh, re removes as much stress as possible on that uh, ear development stage in that corn plant. Thirdly, kernel development. So once we've got that ear development started, we're going into a quick growth stage of the corn plant and the kernels start to try and develop on that ear, getting ready for pollination. And that's a really important, stressful time period in that corn's development. So we really focus on that. And the fourth goal is filling those kernels. Once we've got them pollinated, we need to really figure out ways to assist the plant to move nutrition, utilizing photosynthesis to fill those kernels correctly and give us the ending yield we're looking for. So let's dive into that first goal, priming the soil. The first goal is about providing a nutrient-rich soil for germination. And those three elements that we really focus on involve nitrogen, phosphorus, and sulfur, N, P, and S. And we really want to focus on figuring out ways to loosen the soil nutrient bonds. We have a lot of nutrition that's tied up in kind of a bonding process in the soil. And so we'll need to figure out how to stimulate that and as well stimulate the soil biome, the biological engine that's running down there in the cooler soils that run slow. So we've got some ways in which we try and attack that stimulation process with the soil biome. And then thirdly, we need to prime the soils with enzymes. Enzymes are a very important process of working with not only the corn plant in those early stages, but also the biome. So let's, let's dive right in to that process. When we think about how we have soils in the bonding process, so we think about the elements that are necessary for the corn production. Phosphorus tends to be bound and 
and in a loose bond with calcium, magnesium, and it also might bond into zinc. A lot of our uh, positively charged um, nutrients are held onto the soil particle. And so there's a, a bond there that we're looking for ways to try and release that nutrition at that early stage, kind of prime the soil for that germinating corn plant. So as we apply sulfur, sulfur is one of the elements in a sulfate form. Elemental sulfur doesn't work. It has to be in the sulfate form. And that actually starts to supply sulfur to that little plant, but it also will attach as it releases in the soil to calcium and magnesium. Those are the biggest uh, cations that it'll try to attach to. And that starts this unbonding of phosphate, zinc, all the elements on the left side of the screen. So sulfur then, once it's unbonded some of those elements, it starts to release those not only to the root system, which is really important for that early growth, but those same nutrients are then also used to stimulate residue de decomposition in the soil from last year's crop and start that soil mineralization engine running stronger through the biologicals that we have. So N, P, and S are very important to the starting of the priming process to get ready for high yield corn. As we think about high yield corn, that process in the soil is, is really run by a lot of bacterial in the biome. So as we look at number one, the bacteria, they produce enzymes. To kind of understand how enzymes work, they released by the bacteria or by the corn plant. And as the corn plant grows, it'll actually exude enzymes and those enzymes, their job is about a 30 to 45 day window where they'll go out and break down those large particles of organic matter and other processes in the soil into something that the bacteria and the root can utilize in a much better way. So it's a kind of a circular process that the enzymes start out and make it more available nutrition to this, to the plant and to the biological engine. And that's what we call mineralization. By utilizing our ends up technology, we have enzymes that we can add to products like zinc that we can put in the furrow of the corn plant. And as we plant, and that will actually start this process of breaking down and it'll increase these colony forming units that are of this of the, in the soil. And so we increase this biological activity and that's what really assists the corn plant in developing early stages. So it's, it's this little activity that we're looking at. We focus on two of the many enzymes that are available out in the soil biome, the mannanase enzyme and the lipase enzyme. And the mannanase is really important for starting to break down some of the organic matter. It's kind of like a little Pac-Man that's down there in the soil and it's breaking down that organic matter and releasing a lot of not only sugars, but some auxins, things that the plant and the other uh, uh, bacteria can use to really um, influence the growth rate of both of those. Lipase is all about trying to influence the availability of nitrogen and phosphorus from the soil. So in addition to sulfur releasing those bonds, lipase can also do that. So we've really seen that be very important when we have the opportunity to add something like the X enzyme activity product uh, ends up technology to the, the plant as we plant the crop. Here's some of the data that we saw in 2019 to give you an idea of what you're gonna to expect to see. We'll, on the average, with a 95% confidence level, uh, as we go out and, and look at the plants that we put on the enzymes versus an, a starter that contains zinc, we, get, we put in the enzyme product in place of the zinc that has some zinc in it, but also those enzymes, and we'll see an additional 5.1% increase in height, 4.2% increase in stalk diameter, and 
4.3% increase in the root mass. So we can see visually that the plant is much better shaped and ready in those cool conditions. What does that mean? Well, it means that the plant is gonna give us an additional potential nine bushel in, in our trials spread across the US. We also have now, instead of having a starter applied enzyme treatment, we've got an ends up grain ST. And that is an overtreat where you could go from a box to box treater and actually overtreat with the enzymes directly on the seed. Currently, that has given us even a larger increase in the uh, enzyme activities, and therefore it's increasing the yields more from the data we've collected in the last year across the United States. In the future, we'll really be looking at making this ends up technology available in a talc product. So it'll be easy to apply as you're planting along with your talc, it'll contain some enzymes and we look for that launch to be in 2023. So we really have some great things going on to really assist in the future with the corn production process. So now that we've covered that early stage of trying to prime the soils and get that plant off to a start, now the next real stage that is very important that during those cooler temperatures, maybe damp, hot temperatures, it's, um, we really have those abiotic stresses we need to deal with. We also have to try and a lot of times as we put on a post herbicide, we need to metabolize that herbicide. And so there's, there's some things we can do to try and increase that met metabolization process. There's nutrients, specific nutrients that really evolve around that metabolization process. We want to increase the photosynthesis. We don't have very big leaves, but we do have a big developing root system. And those roots are also now starting to produce photosynthates. They send parts of those root to the roots and those are exuded. And once again, that stirs up that soil biome. So the microbes are even doing more work and releasing more nutrition. That's a really important part of man managing for high yields. So the second, the second goal is really that uh, part of reducing stress. Let's, let's see what we can do to accomplish that. And what we've done at Brandt is develop some products that can be put on foliar and they're in the smart uh, technology group of either Trio, Smart Quattro could be used or Smart Sulfur. So you'd pick one of those three products depending upon your needs and put it with your post herbicide or apply it alone with water and apply it to the plants. And what we're really focusing on is zinc, which is really valuable in the process of dealing with the cold and manganese, which is improvement of not only the metabolization of the herbicide, but also in photosynthesis. And very important there, iron, sulfur, and molybdenum. Sulfur, once again, is part of the process of each one of those products that can really help stimulate that plant um, to work through a, a tough environment and keep our nitrogen to sulfur ratios much more in check. So as you look at Brandt Smart Trio, we've got a little bit of nitrogen, 3% sulfur, a dab of boron, 3% manganese, and 3% zinc. And each one of the products below has the same technology in it, and it just adds a little bit more either molybdenum or boron to those as maybe some soils may require. So let's take a little deeper look at what that smart trio is doing and how it works, the smart technology in the plant. So here we have a cutaway of the leaf surface and some foliar products that if we were to apply a competitor's product or the Brandt product and how those actually interact with that leaf surface as we apply them. And you can start to see that we'll get a lot of activity. We'll move a little bit of the competitor's product into the leaf, but it's really important that we see not only the product going on the leaf surface and through the leaf, but we to get it to this phloem and xylem. These are these tubes 
that actually move nutrition throughout the corn plant, up and down, all the way to the roots, the growing points of the root and the growing points of the new plant. So without moving the nutrition into the flow, phloem and xylem, you really don't have a very important product for the plant's utilization. That's what the SMART system is all about. Number one is to allow that nutrition to move quickly. Secondly, it's all about compatibility. If you don't have a product that can be compatible with post products, such as herbicides or insecticides, something else that it can ride along with, the SMART system is, is developed as a compatible product. It also is developed to uh, have this protection so that the micronutrient doesn't get attached to some of those products like a glyphosate, for example. That is one of the problems that we first addressed back in 2008 and 9 with the Smart System Trio. And it's not a chelate or a complex. Chelates tend to be a very difficult to move in through the plant leaf. And so we really focused on a new technology in the smart system that accomplishes getting it into the leaf, getting it through and into that um, area of the flow and going throughout the plant. And it's also really interesting that the product is a dries down to more or less a gel on the leaf. It doesn't dry to a crystalline compound. And so it's re-wettable as we go through an evening and we can have additional uptake into the plant rather than a competitor that may have some even difficulties in the mixing process. So we really have to jump over that hurdle of not only getting it through the leaf, but also getting it mixed and, and making sure that we're not creating any problems for the grower. So compatibility is very top uh, in eliminating those issues. So what have we seen out of the brand Smart Trio and early B2 to B8 applications? we'll start to see that it influences the girth of the ear or the number of rows around. That is formed at an early stage of the growing plant. And it's really important as we apply at a B3 stage, we'll start to see one to two more rows additionally. And each of those rows around can mean that we've got an opportunity for 20 more bushel per acre. So in case of two rows, we've got a potential for 40 bushel per acre more corn if the rest of the year on that growing developing corn plant can maintain those kernels as we go through the reproduction process. So it's all about that early stage of setting the trajectory for a high yield. So then we move next from that earlier stage to the third goal, which is how to influence reproduction. And really, it's about addressing these transient deficiencies. Transient deficiencies are within the plant as it grows very, very quickly. It'll run into deficiencies of one element over another. And it a lot of times is driven by the fast growth, not being able to have the roots keep up with bringing in the amount of either boron or potassium, some of those elements that are needed in heavy amounts during that growth stage, as well as improving the pollination and kernel set. We can also focus on a couple of products that increase the nitrogen metabolism in the corn plant. So corn plants take up a lot of nitrogen from the soil, the soil biome, nitrogen that has been applied, and it'll actually store it in the plant, but it doesn't utilize it very efficiently unless we've got other elements like um, molybdenum or potassium to really help it utilize that in these uh, nitrogen assimilation process. And then lastly, we really wanna focus on increasing photosynthesis. And a lot of times fungicides are very helpful in that as well as some of the other elements that uh, we've already uh, put on with the uh, B2 to B8 stage. So let's take a look at how we can influence that reproductive stage, the third goal. Third goal is all about trying to get the plant to uh, utilize some key nutrients 
that are really in short supply. They're being taken up very quickly, uh, boron and potassium. We don't need a lot of boron. We don't need a lot of molybdenum, but we need a tremendous amount of potassium on a daily basis. About 15 pounds per acre is being taken up as the corn plants growing. So we focus on those three elements and it's really the smart KB at a quart per acre and it's supplying some nitrogen, but really its focus is 16% potassium, 2.5% boron, and a little dab of molybdenum that really increases that plant's, corn plant's ability to utilize that nitrogen efficiently and turn it into sugars. So as we take a look at that, we really see that the uh, seasonal boron uptake is very small until we reach that V10 stage. So as we look at that V14 stage, that's really where a high amount of boron is needed. And in the same way, a tremendous amount of potassium is needed. The boron tends to level off as we get into the reproductive stage itself. So we're not taking up a lot more. We need to be really focused as getting that boron on at an earlier stage. And that really fits the newer timings of dealing with fungicides and fungicides that last longer in the plants. And so that's where we're getting a lot of our evidence. Boron still works at applications at the R1 and R2, but we get a, a bigger response at this bigger V14 uh, stage. It gives us additional yield. So boron is a difficult uh, nutrient to try and get through those uh, corn leaves as we look at that cutout again. And it's all about trying to move that boron. The red particles indicate going to that phloem again. And otherwise, in a normal product, conventional boron tie-up, if you don't use a technology that uh, doesn't allow for it, it gets stuck in the corn leaf, really doesn't supply any boron to those growing plants, which is really back to that phloem and xylem and moving that nutrition. So um, we're really trying to make sure that we've created a product, a boron that doesn't cross link and tie up into the pectins in the upper side of that corn leaf. That's what causes a lot of boron uh, foliar application issues. And we've solved that through a technology called the cross-linking technology. So if we look at our, some of our data in 2020, where we did 20 acres side-by-side -side from B10 to R2 timing, we see it all, all across the US, we had really good results. We averaged nine bushel per acre advantage in 2020. And it's all about that small amount of boron. Number one, the boron is all about trying to increase the cell structure. Boron's very important in the outside cell wall and by increasing that cell structure, we don't get leakage of sugars into that uh, area outside of the cell, which can really, number one, start a lot of diseases. So it's also assisting with disease. But secondly, there's the potassium that's in there, and that KB product really assists from cell to cell sugar movement, not only cell to cell, but also into that phloem. So small amounts of K can really assist during those transient high need K time periods of the growth of the plant. And that's what is really the backbone of the KB product, along with some molybdenum to assist with the nitrogen utilization. This is some data that we collected visually at the research farm at Pleasant Plains. We applied at a V14 stage of the corn plant. So it would have been about two leaves prior to tassel, maybe uh, seven days, five days before tassel. And we put out a control where we didn't apply any of the foliars. We applied KB at a quart per acre. We applied Smart BMO, which is the be next best thing that we've used in the past at a pint per acre, to give us that boron and molybdenum. And we compared it to the standard in the industry of 10% boron at a gallon per acre rate and a two gallon per acre rate. And once again, control where we did not apply. 
And we really see that KB outperformed with that additional potassium uh, being added into the boron and molybdenum. So those growth stages that really matter and it, the focus is to try and get it on early and it can be a ride along with that first fungicide application given some of the newer fungicide labeling and technology that's being used. As we look at this 2021 crop year, we see the same similar action as we look at the control on each side. And if we went out at a V10 stage, even in an earlier stage, and it's still carrying through that product has changed that plant's ability to utilize its nutrition more effectively and gave us some additional yield. Seen very, very good results out of that product. So it's addition, smart KB to the fungicide at those early stages of reproduction are one of the key ways in which we can change the yield trajectory. And next, after we uh, got the third program where we're out there, now we need to move to the fourth goal. And that's really to improve the photosynthesis. That corn plant now has to try and maintain those kernels that it's pollinated. And so we really want to focus. And once again, a lot of growers are starting to see some additional uh, disease impact uh, from tar spot. So they're looking at two applications of a fungicide or insecticide or just making one application at that traditional uh, VT to R2 stage. And they'll act, add, add in the smart trio to provide some zinc and manganese and add to it either a smart demo at a pint or smart KB at a quart to try and give us some additional uh, nutrition to improve photosynthesis, maintain the zinc levels in the ear leaf, which really at this ear leaf, that's where a lot of the nutrition is being pulled to fill those ears. So we need to maintain that zinc level for top yield. And that really stops the tip, uh, tip back of the, uh, the ear of corn. And it's this kernel abortion that we worry about. So each row of kernels at the tip that we lose, each row is worth five and a half bushel per acre. So it's, it's really impactful if we can minimize that stress. And then we can also increase kernel weight by driving more sugars into that plant and stop the premature plant death uh, by having that better nutrition program. So filling the kernels, we really start at that smart trio and smart either BMO or KB. It's once again, focused on boron application, potassium, both of those elements and molybdenum zinc, all very important in the process of this nitrogen utilization and utilization of sunshine. And if it's on with a fungicide, they'll work hand in hand to assist the corn plant with a darker color and more utilization of sugar movement manufacturing. So it's the Brandt Smart Trio at one to two quarts per acre, and typically either a pint of BMO or a one to two quarts per acre of KB to try and help meet those late season stresses. Those are the four goals that we're looking at to try and uh, assist growers with maximizing their yields and their return on investment. Um, we have a new brand product finder that we wanted to make everyone aware of. You can go to your app store, download it onto your phone. It's designed for either the iOS or the Android, or you can move, move it to your tablet. And it provides you with the opportunity to look at brand labels and, and the SDSs, uh, brochures that give you some guidance. And of course, um, it's really part of the uh, ability to contact your local brand experts in your area, giving out some information locally for you. We also provided in 2022, a grower micronutrient guide. And this is really a guide that was put together to give growers some key micronutrient agronomics conditions leading to deficiencies, the ideal tissue test ranges, which can be very difficult to kind of sort through on your own. And this will give you some guidance as well as micronutrient ratio considerations 
Um, it's not about just exactly what the levels are. It's trying to make considerations if you've got one element very high and one very low, and then also application strategies and deficiency symptoms. You can find all this at www.brant.co info to grow on. So look that up on your, uh, to find some information on the new micronutrient guide. Thank you for your time today. And well, hopefully you picked up some, some things that will really assist you with your corn growth and uh, production system. All right. Nice job, Ed. Uh, I want to remind folks, if uh, you have a question, you can use the uh, question mark icon at the right of the screen. In fact, Ed, we have, uh, we have a couple of questions in. Uh, let's take a look at, at those, and, and we'll look at this one first. In today's high nutrition cost per acre, what should I expect in ROI from your foliar products? So we really take a hard look as we're developing these products to make sure that they are very economical for the grower to purchase. Um, and as we try and gauge, you know, what the value is, we start looking at the price of corn, the bushel of corn. And typically you can buy a quart of each of those products that we've talked about today at less than a bushel of corn or at a bushel of corn cost. And we expect to see that at least try and give you back a three bushel per acre or more. The, the, the value of the product is really dependent upon the amount of stresses and the um, growth timing that you hit that product with. So the more stress on that crop, maybe the higher uh, population of corn, the more that value can be. I tend to average about 10 bushel per acre for the trio and uh, the KB. So those are some of them that have been really responsive in a high production system. All right, another question. If I already used zinc and manganese in my starter, will I see a response using foliar? So that, that is one of the questions that as we developed the foliar programs back in 2008 through about two, uh, 2010 and 2011, we started to really take a hard look at if the growers were using quite a bit of chelated zinc, for example, in their furrow, would they still see that? And we, the answer is we always see a good response to a trio type application because of that manganese, zinc, and sulfur addition. Those three are very responsive when it comes to dealing with those early cool conditions. So yes, in our data, we've, we've really seen that uh, be a way to assist that uh, corn plant through those early stresses. All right. Again, if you have a question, you can use the question mark icon. Another question in, how would you compare 10% boron to your smart boron products? So number one, 10% boron has been out for a number of years, and it's really for the, each pound of active metal that you're buying, it's a really good uh, value. We manufacture 10% boron, so we're very supportive, but when it comes to 10% boron, it, it's really its forte, its best use is in the soil. And that's where we would suggest that if you're gonna buy 10% boron, put it in the soil, if you were to compare it to a foliar like BMO or KB, it just doesn't have the ability to move through that corn plant, go into the phloem and into the growing points and give you the value that you're looking for. So it's really about utilizing that product in a soil situation and utilizing the smart system products in a foliar situation. Ed, I think we have time for uh, maybe one more question, uh, and that is, are there different stresses with different herbicides? You know, that's uh, one of the questions as we started to develop these foliars and did a lot of testing early stages in 2009, 10, and 11, looking at the different modes of action that herbicides utilize 
to stop the weeds. And a corn plant has to break those different modes of action down. Some of them are whitening products that whiten the tissues, uh, stop the sunshine in the weed, and that's how they control. Others uh, stop in, in other ways, being able to assist the plant. And so as we uh, look at that, the products that tend to uh, change the color of the corn plant, whether it's white or give it a yellow cast, those can be really um, important to utilize a product like Trio that assists with that uh, metabolization. So um, as, we, as we follow along, it's the products that um, tend to change the color of that corn plant and slow its growth those are the ones that we tend to really see the largest increase from yield utilizing the Brant Smart technology. Well, Ed, doggone it, we've run out of time. I do want to remind folks that uh, if uh, you did not uh, get your question answered today, uh, it will be answered by email within the next week. And I have to mention, Ed, I enjoyed your uh, Pac-Man reference uh, during, your, during your presentation. Again, let me thank uh, Ed Corrigan, Senior Agronomist of Discovery and Innovation at Brandt. Thanks again to Brandt and Farm Journal for their support in bringing this webinar to you. And thank you for joining us. This uh, webinar will be available on demand at agweb.com. I'm Dave Russell.